but uh, some explanation has to be given as of uh, as on how we have to take certain quantities in the solution so i thought i will solve them in the class itself okay so tomorrow afternoon what you have diploma people are here diploma yes, people yeah tomorrow tomorrow you have additional mathematics class yes sir okay yesterday in the session take it up at what time you have additional mathematics class tomorrow till 2:40 sir till 2:40 okay then from 2:45 to 3:45 i will take the class okay so tomorrow there will be a electric motors class from 2:45 to 3:45 or 4 o'clock okay so i have to do that there is no other way in covering the syllabus okay. so we'll come to the solution So first we will write the given things. The statement goes, a 1100 volt 50 hertz delta connected induction motor uh, has a star connected slip ring rotor with phase transformation ratio of 3.9. The rotor resistance is 0 0.011 ohms and the standstill reactance is 0.26 ohms per phase. Neglecting the stator impedance, find the rotor current at standstill with slip rings short circuited. Rotor power factor at start with slip ring shorted. Third, rotor current at 4% slip with slip ring shorted. Rotor power factor at 4% slip with slip ring shorted. Okay. And external rotor resistance per phase required to obtain a starting current of 100 amperes in stator. So this is the problem uh, statement. So first we'll write the given things. So supply voltage V is equals to 1100 volts. F is 50 hertz. Okay. Then it is a delta star connection. Stator is delta, rotor is a star. With a phase transformation ratio. So 1 by K is equals to 3.9. I told. If transformation ratio mentioned is 3.9, more than 1, it is stator to rotor. If it is less than 1, it is rotor to stator. Okay, this you have to remember. Then the rotor resistance per phase, R2 is equals to 0 0.011 ohm per phase. And X2 is equals to 0 0.26 ohms per phase. So when we talk about three phase systems, always the parameters we check, uh, see are per phase values. Okay. So neglecting the stator impedance, we have to find those many. I will not rewrite those things once again. Okay. Now, uh, the first point what we need to find out is the rotor current at standstill. So first we'll write the formula what we want to find out. So rotor current at standstill, is I2 is equals to, I can write E2 by Z2. Okay. It is E2 by uh, Z2. Okay. Now what is Z2? I can find it out easily. But what is E2? I have a stator voltage. Okay. But I need to find out rotor voltage. Okay. So E2 is the rotor voltage at on open circuit obviously at standstill only on open circuit now the question is how to get the uh, stator to rotor voltage because in the previous example what we have seen that a rotor voltage was directly mentioned between two slip rings okay whatever the examples we had seen in that it was directly mentioned the rotor induced dmf on open circuit between the slip rings or so and so much volts but here that is not mentioned here we need to know it from 
the stator voltage. So here I have to use transformation ratio. Okay. So remember one thing: whenever you are transfer using transformation ratio in induction motor, check what are the connections in stator and rotor. Stator is delta connected. Rotor is star connected. So in delta connection, phase voltage and line voltages are same. Whereas in star connection, phase voltage is root three times lesser than line voltage. So when we are using a transformation ratio, you should check whether the transformation ratio is a per phase transformation ratio or total transformation ratio. So it is very clearly mentioned that slip ring rotor with phase transformation ratio, okay, of three point nine. So when uh, Here, one uh, by k is equals to three point nine, which is per phase. Or I can write this as equals to this equals to I can write this as uh, stator voltage per phase divided by rotor voltage per phase. Now, what is stator voltage per phase? In a delta connected circuit, the phase voltage is same as that of line voltage. Okay. So, as stator is delta connected, stator phase voltage is equals to stator line voltage. Okay. Therefore, uh, which is equals to thousand one hundred. And remember, in any three-phase system, when the voltage is mentioned, it will be by default line voltage unless and until specified. Unless and until it is specified as phase voltage, the voltage mentioned will always be a line voltage. So here, since it is delta in the stator, the line voltage and phase voltage both are equal. Okay. Line voltage and phase voltage both are equal, so it is eleven hundred volts. So therefore, I can write three point nine is equal to eleven hundred divided by E two. Okay, and E two is equal to I can write eleven hundred divided by Three point nine. This comes equals to two eighty two. Two eighty two volts. Okay. Now, therefore. And Z two is equals to Z two. I can find very easily. Okay, it is equals to R two square plus X two square. Uh, this is under root. R two is point zero one one square plus point two six square. Under root point two six zero two. Therefore, I two is equals to. Okay, it is two eighty two divided by point. People are there. Am I audible? Yes, sir. So it is one thousand eighty-three point six amperes. 
so this is the rotor current at start okay at standstill second point second point is to find the rotor power factor with slippering shortened it means uh, uh, at uh, not added any external resistance into the circuit rotor power factor okay. so cos phi 2 is equals to it is simply r2 by z2 0.011 divided by 0 0.2602 zero four two two. lagging and zero four two lagging so third part third point is uh, rotor current at 4% slip uh, I2 at or IR at S equals to 4 4% not 4 4% that is 0 0.04 okay. so there you will get IR is equals to Yes, uh, uh, into E2 divided by uh, ZR, you can say. Okay. Yes, into E2 divided by ZR. What is ZR here? Under root R2 square plus S into X2 square, that is XR. So this gives under root 0 0.011 square plus 0 0.04 into 0 0.26 square or uh, if you want you can calculate s into x2 outside and substitute here no issues both will be same that r is equals to So ZR is 0 0.015, 0 0.0151 ohms. These all values are per phase. All these values are per phase. Okay. So you should keep that in mind constantly. Therefore, IR is equals to 0 0.04 into 282 divided by Point zero one five one. It is seven forty five MPS. Seven forty five MPS. So this is the third point to find out the current at 4% slip then rotor power factor at 4% okay. uh, uh, rotor power factor at 4% uh, this is at standstill okay this is at standstill whatever we found out this power factor is at standstill so cos phi r is equals to r2 divided by zr so it is 0 0.011 divided by 0 
it is 0.728 lagging point seven to eight like that next point extra uh, external rotor resistance per phase required to obtain a starting current of 100 amps okay so the fifth point to be calculated is R external for IST is equals to 100 amps. Now, if the stator current is 100 amperes, what would be the rotor current? Transformation ratio because all the values we have in the rotor side, we will take it in the rotor side. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, IR should be 7 for 7, no? IR should be? 7 for 7. MPS. 745.143 I got in my calculator, so I wrote. Is it so with all others? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 0.04 into 282. It's 747.0151. One second. Yeah, 747.019. Yes, sir. I think maybe I made a small mistake in entering the data. Thank you. 747. Okay. Then, now uh, the transformation ratio okay, is equal to uh, as per the given statement okay, uh, is 3.9, which is equals to uh, stator voltage by rotor voltage and is equals to rotor current by stator current. Is it right? Because the transformation ratio for old, uh, transformer is you have found that k is equals to e2 by e1 equal to n2 by n1 equals to i1 by i2. Similarly here, if I am taking 3.9 as the ratio of stator to rotor voltage, then it will become a ratio of rotor to stator current. Okay, so I can write 3.9 is equals to i2 divided by ist, okay. i2 divided by ist, Therefore, I2 is equals to, because I2 is the current at standstill, it is external resistance for starting current. It means at standstill. So, I2 is equals to 3.9 into 100. So, I2 is equals to 3, uh, 390 amperes. Now, to have 390 amperes of current in the rotor, what should be the external resistance connected? That is the question. Okay. Now, what is I2? So, this I2 uh, is equals to, I can write E2 by Z2. And this Z2, I will write this as under root. Now the, we know that there is an external resistance already added. So I will write this as R2 plus R external square plus X2 square. Okay. R2 plus R external square plus X2 square. Now I know what is E2. So E2 is uh, the voltage which is induced at standstill which is equal to 282 volts. Okay. So I know I2 which is equals to 390 amperes. 
sorry, amperes, not degrees, amperes. So what I will write here is, okay, uh, 282 by Z2 is equals to 390. Or Z2 is equals to 282 by 390. 0.723. 0.723. Uh, now Z2 is what? Under root R2 plus R external. square plus x2 square is equals to 0 0.723. Rishav Prasad, what is the time to join the class, man? Oh, sir, I'm sorry, sir. What, sorry? Sir, I was sorry, done. The only thing what you have learnt is to say sorry. Huh? And you people don't know at which context the sorry has to be used. That is the irony. So now, square on both the sides, we will get R2 plus R external square plus X2 square is equals to 0 0.522 so not the year here there is no okay uh, then you solve on your own and find what is r external okay you do that okay. let us not go into the mathematical simplification uh, meanwhile we can use that time in writing the statement of other examples. Yeah. So we'll move to next. You solve this on your own. We'll move to next example. Calculate the torque exerted. by an 8 pole 50 hertz 3 phase uh, induction motor operating at 5% slip The maximum torque developed is one fifty kg meter at a speed of Six hundred RPM. Rotor resistance per phase is rotor resistance per phase is point six ohms. So this is the given statement. 
so number of poles are eight frequency is 50 uh, yes is equals to five percent then uh, T max okay. is one fifty kg meter. If you multiply it with nine point eight one, then it will become Newton meter. Two students have made this mistake in the second test while explaining the load test. Directly, you people have written there S one minus S two into R newton meters that is wrong you should multiply that with 9.81 acceleration due to gravity then only it will become newton meter okay then uh, r2 is 0 0.6 the okay t max at n is equals to 600 rpm n is equals to 600 rpm no. the normal operating slip of the motor is 5% but whereas the operating speed of the motor when uh, uh, getting a torque maximum torque is 600 rpm okay this is the difference okay. so i have to find the torque exerted by a induction motor at 5% slip whereas the torque maximum torque is 150 kg meter at 600 rpm so the slip corresponding to maximum torque is with respect to the speed 600 rpm this is not the slip corresponding to maximum torque okay that you should we should uh, keep it in mind so therefore ns is equals to first i will write uh, 120f upon p this is 120 into 50 divided by 8 Okay, so this is 750 rpm for four pole it is 1500 rpm and for eight pole it is half of that 750 rpm okay then speed at t max is 600 rpm therefore slip at T max okay. uh, that is taken as SB in the previous one of the previous class we have seen the slip corresponding to maximum torque we take it as what SB here somewhere we have mentioned before the example was taken ESB okay which is equal to R2 by X2 Now SB is equals to, uh, I can write it as 750 minus 600 divided by 750. So it is 0 0.2, 20% slip. Okay. The slip is 20%. Therefore, for maximum torque, R2 is equals to SB into X2. R2 is equal to SB into X2. So I can find out X2 here. Therefore, X2 is equals to R2 by SB. That is 0.6 divided by 0.2 that is 3 ohms okay so x2 is 3 ohms yeah. 
So I can write T max is equals to, okay. Uh, we know by uh, substituting the value of uh, uh, what we say, there are three different equations of T max here. We have found out in the previous discussion. A1 E2 square by 2 X2, K1 S E2 square by 2 R2, K1 E2 square by 2 R2. Okay. So generally we use this equation. Both are same. So equation 2 and 3 are uh, same. Sorry, 2 and 4 are same. Okay. We can use this equation also, no harm. Okay. Now I need to find the uh, uh, torque at slip 5%. So there are three equations. So a equation with slip into it is equation three. Okay. So you should remember these three equations. So we have T max is equals to it is K1 uh, S into E2 square divided by 2R2. K1 S into E2 square divided by 2 R2. Uh, now what is uh, uh, K1? It is 3 pi div uh, 3 divided by 2 pi ns. Okay, so K1 is what? But I think it is not necessary as we don't know E2 also. Neither I know E2 nor I know K1. K1 I can find out but uh, there is no uh, meaning in getting that. Okay, so we will see. And this is equal to 150 kg meter. Now, torque, uh, running torque at slip is equal to 5% can be given as TR is equals to I can write K1 E2 square R2 sorry K1 S into E2 square R2 divided by R2 square plus S into X2 whole square now this is the equation for running time right This is the equation for running torque. Now I know S, I know X2, I know R2. Okay. Substitute those values. Or here uh, T max is equals to, therefore T max is equals to, I will uh, write it here. K1, okay. what is S? 0.2 okay. into E2 square. Keep it as it is. Anyway, it will. It is not necessary to find out. Then two into point uh, six. So what I get here? Point two by one point two. Point one six six k one e two square. Point one six six k one e two square. Okay, and uh, this is equals to one fifty. Okay, PR is equals to. You can take this as equation, not equation, not necessary. K one yes into e two square equals to. I will take K1 E2 square outside into S is 0 0.05 into R2 is 0 0.6 divided by uh, 0 0.6 plus 0 0.05 into point, sorry not it is into 3 whole square okay this is equals to Point zero five into point six divided by point six square. This is R two square. 
0.6 square plus 0 0.05 into 3 whole square is 0 0.0784 into k1 a2 square point zero seven eight four k1 a2 square okay. now taking the ratio taking ratio pr to t max So it will be point uh, sorry, TR divided by 150 is equals to point zero seven eight K1 E2 square divided by point one six six K1 E2 square. So the K1 E2 square will go off, TR is equals to so running torque is 70.87 kg meter. If you multiply it with 9.81, you will get Newton meter. That's it. Okay, so this is the solution for the uh, problem mentioned. Okay, now I will uh, time being stop here. Stop presenting also. I will stop recording also. <laughs>